Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. And at no other time was that little introductory line more applicable than today, because that is exactly what we're going to speak about, decisions. You see, there's power in the decisions you make. And sometimes even the seemingly small decisions in life can have a profound effect on you and the people around you. Every day, you make thousands of decisions. What you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and so forth. And many of these decisions are made subconsciously because you've done them so many times, but they're still decisions. And one small decision can have a significant impact on your life. You may always drive the same route to work, and one day you decide to drive another route, only to discover that it was the day when there was a massive accident on the road you usually take. And you think, what if I didn't decide to go the other way? We never know what the impact of our decisions will be. All we know is that even the smallest decision can have a massive impact. The interesting thing is that making decisions is a uniquely human trait. God gave us the ability and the privilege to make our own choices. Now, you may think that your pet also makes decisions based on their cognitive capabilities, but that's not true. They are not governed by their choices, but rather by their instinct. And if they look like they're deciding not to eat their food, it's not because they read the label and decided that it doesn't have enough nutritional value or probably has too many E numbers for their liking. They act instinctively due to what they smell or maybe what they feel like at that moment. Your cat doesn't decide that since it's Friday, he'll prefer the fish option rather than the meat. Animals don't decide. They react to situations around them. Humans, on the other hand, make decisions all the time, or at least we are supposed to not just act instinctively on how we feel or what our natural desires are. But we should actually think about our decisions and our options before we make a decision and not just react on the stimuli around us. Unfortunately, many people just act on their desires and do not make wise decisions. And that's why it's so important for us to talk about this, because the decisions you make today will determine the life you're going to live tomorrow. Now, it may seem strange to you that I'm talking about decisions in such uncertain times as we are living in right now. Many people feel totally out of control, and they don't feel as though they have a lot of choice at the moment. Here in the UK, we're still currently in lockdown. Or if there's not a lockdown where you are, you're probably still restricted in what you can do in so many ways. You can't get close to other people. You can't go into shops without wearing a mask. There are so many things that you were used to do, and you cannot do them at the moment. It probably feels like many decisions have been taken away from you that you don't have a lot of choice currently. However, if you think about it, you will realize that you are still faced with so many decisions every day, with one of the most important ones being the attitude with which you live. However, what often happens, either when we feel limited in our choices or overwhelmed by our circumstances, is that we become indecisive. We just don't know what to do. So we often do nothing and hope the issue we're we're facing will just resolve itself. Friends, indecision is the great immobilizer. When we don't know what to do, it immobilizes us. It makes us freeze. I don't know if you've ever walked into a shop or maybe did some online shopping and you want to buy a certain product, but then you look at the shelf or at all the other options and suddenly you find yourself unable to make a decision. You almost wish there were only two options, or or even better, only one. Being faced with decisions can be quite stressful. And therefore, if we want to relieve the stress, we need to realize that the opposite of that previous statement is also true. Just as indecision is the great immobilizer, so making a decision or being decisive is the great mobilizer. While indecision will make you feel weak and powerless, Making that decision that you have been putting off will make you feel as though you've got power again. It will empower you, as though you have taken some control in your situation. Making a decision is what will get you moving again. And for some of you listening to this message, that is exactly what you need to do. So often we feel overwhelmed by our circumstances and the decisions we have to make because we just don't know what to do. So we will fret about it and we will lay awake at night about it and we will have lots of anxiety about it. 
And then once we make that decision, suddenly we feel a lot calmer. The anxiety is gone or at least a bit less. Our minds are clearer and we know exactly what to do. And so we do it. It's the decisiveness, making that decision that mobilizes us, that gets us moving again after we felt stuck. Friends, there is power in making a decision. In Proverbs 4, we read, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out the straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. In other words, consider your situation. Make your decision and then stick to it. There's power in making the decision. The clearer you are about the road you need to take, the more empowered you will feel. Now, next week, we'll speak more about how to know what to do, how to make wise decisions. Today, though, I just want you to realize how much power there is in making a decision, especially those of you who have been putting it off, hoping that a situation would just resolve itself. What scares people about decisions is that it can feel pretty big. And yet, even though the consequences may be big, the decision itself is usually not that big. More often than not, it's a choice between this house or that house, this subject or that subject, Uh, doing what is right but difficult or doing what is wrong but easy. The whole process in weighing up the consequences may be complicated, but the final choice itself is often quite simple. Yet it may feel big and thus we are immobilized by it. Let me explain it this way. Have a quick look at a power button on whatever device you're watching this on whether that's your television or your laptop or your mobile phone, what's the symbol for power? It's a zero and a one, not a zero and a hundred. You may be debating whether you want the device on or not, whether you want to listen to this message or not, but to make the final decision is quite simple. You either switch it on or keep it off. Power literally lies in going from zero to one. In making one small decision, taking one small step, pressing one small button, the difference between having power and having no power is literally the difference between zero and one. Friends, the same may be true in your life right now. You could be feeling totally powerless because you don't know what to do. You've had all the debates in your mind. You spoke to others about it and you followed many steps that we'll be talking about next week. But where you got stuck is making that final decision, flicking the switch. Listen to me. The moment you go from zero to one, the moment you make a decision, you will most probably experience power where you felt previously powerless. When you're in total darkness, it is just a flick of a switch that can give you light. When you feel lost, it is just one prayer that will let you feel found again. When you feel immobilized by your circumstances, it is one decision that will get you moving again. For instance, if you feel stuck because you haven't been exercising and you don't feel motivated, maybe you need to decide to go for a walk around the block today. That one decision may be the start of you getting back on track with your exercising. It may be that you need to say no, or yes, or please, or stop, And even though these words may sound small, those decisions may make all the difference to your life and will reintroduce power into your life. So let me ask you, where do you feel immobilized in your life right now? What makes you feel stuck? The antidote is to make the decision you have been putting off. It will bring power back into your life. In the Hebrew Scriptures, what we know as the Old Testament, there's an amazing story of a showdown between God's prophet Elijah and the hundreds of prophets of Baal and Asherah, the gods of the neighboring nations. And this showdown was about to take place in front of a massive crowd of people. And Elijah addressed them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Their indecision left them speechless. They were immobilized 
by their inability to make a decision. However, Elijah was clear and decisive. And he told the prophets of Baal and Asherah to bring a sacrifice to their gods and he will bring one to God. And whoever answers with fire is the true God. Very simple, clear and decisive. So the Baal and Asherah prophets went first and all day they called on their gods to answer, but nothing happened. Finally, Elijah stepped up, built an altar, put a sacrifice and some wood on it and then for dramatic effect, asked the people to fill some cans with water and he poured so much water on the wood that it was totally drenched. It even filled the trench around it. And then he prayed a simple prayer, just asking God for his intervention. Guess what happened? God intervened. Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Then Elijah commanded, Seize all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one escape. So the people seized them all. The people suddenly sprang into action. They made a decision and they acted on it. No more procrastinating. No more putting off making a decision. No more wondering about it. But swift, clear, action. Friends, the difference between power and no power in your life is making a decision. It lies in flicking the switch from zero to one. However, before you do that, there are a few principles from this story that you need to keep in mind. The first one is gather information before you make a decision. We will talk more about this next week, but this is like the first principle of good decisions. Do your research. Find out as much information as possible. Get as many facts as you can. Make sure you know enough. Obviously, we will not always have all the information, but it's important to realize that we can only act on what we do know. And that is why it's important to gather as much information as possible. What's interesting in this story is that you have to remember that these people already had more than enough information to make an informed decision. They grew up with all the stories of how God saved their nation and brought them out of slavery. They had all the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses. And they had all the law and the scriptures. And they learned about King David and the wisdom of Solomon. And it wasn't that it was just historical knowledge. At that very moment, they were in a drought that Elijah announced was from God. And many of them must have heard the stories of how God kept Elijah alive during that time, and how Elijah stayed with the widow and how the flour and oil never ran out in that house, despite the famine in the country. Maybe they even heard how God used Elijah to raise the widow's child from the dead. The point is that they had everything they needed to make a decision. Yet, when it came down to taking that final step, they stalled. They wanted their cake and eat it. They wanted both God and Baal at the same time, whichever was most convenient for them at any given moment. And so they remained indecisive. We need to get, gather as much information as possible, but it should never become an excuse for us to remain immobilized. Once we know what to do, we should take responsibility for making the decision. No one else can make your decisions for you. You have to realize that it is your responsibility because in the end, you are accountable for your own life. In Romans 14, we read, So we will all have to explain to God the things we have done. That is a scary thought and much easier to just blame someone else, which is not something you can do when you realize your decisions are your responsibility. When you know God is going to ask you to explain what you've done with your life, it would be totally ridiculous to relinquish responsibility for your decisions to other people, especially people who do not have your best interests at heart. To say, yes, I know it's dishonest, but my boss said I should do it, will not be good enough one day. The responsibility for your decisions rests with you alone. If you read the whole story of Elijah and the Baal prophets, you will see that the people who advocated the worship of false gods were the rulers, Ahab and his evil wife, Jezebel. 
and people just follow them. It was like, yes, it may be better to serve the God of Israel, but Jezebel is so cruel, and she says we should serve Baal. And so it's really her responsibility. It's on her head. Now, she was definitely accountable for her actions, but so were each person on that mountain. It is each person's responsibility to make their own choices. You have to decide who you are going to worship and who you are going to follow and how you are going to act towards others. Each person needs to decide whether they are going to be honest in their job, whether they are going to be faithful in their marriage, whether they are going to be true to their values and their principles. That is no one else's responsibility but yours. And you will be held accountable for it. The problem wasn't that this nation of Israel didn't know what to do. It was that they lacked the will to do it. They lacked the backbone to say, this is my choice and I will take responsibility for it. And that is why it's so significant that Elijah stepped up and said, it's time that you take responsibility and make the decision. No one else can make the choice for you. Not me, not Ahab, not Jezebel, just you. So can I ask you, Are you taking responsibility for making the decisions only you can make? Or are you relinquishing it to others? Because it's easier to blame than it is to take responsibility for it. It could be that you're stuck in neutral because you don't think you can choose. But friends, you do have a choice. In the New Testament, one of Jesus' closest friends, John, received a revelation from God in which he had to write a letter to the church in Laodicea. And he quoted Jesus saying to them in Revelation 3, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Jesus was saying, I wish you just flick the switch. Turn it on or turn it off, but stop hanging around and wondering what to do. Your indecision is immobilizing you. It's making you powerless. And therefore, just as you need to realize that a responsibility for your decisions rests on you, so you have to realize that the consequences of your decision belong to you. Galatians 6 verse 7, we read, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Whatever decision you make, You've got to realize that your choice will come with certain inevitable consequences. You will reap what you sow. You will harvest what you planted. You cannot make a certain choice and then say you don't want the consequences of that choice. If you don't want the consequences, then make another choice. You cannot sow corn and expect to reap potatoes. If you want potatoes, you've got to plant potatoes. The consequences of the decision you make are part and parcel of the choice itself. They go together and therefore you've got to keep them in mind when you make your decision. Friends, there's a lot of power in one decision. The flick of the switch can bring light when it's dark all around you. Or it can plummet you into total darkness. It all depends on the decision you make. So consider the consequences. If you're still uncertain about how to make a wise decision, come back next week and we'll talk about it. However, for those of you who've got all the information you need and you know what the consequences of that decision will be, but are just unwilling to take that step of faith and make the decision you know you need to make, can I just encourage you to take responsibility and do what you're called to do? Flick the switch? If you do, you may find that you suddenly have a lot more power and feel a lot stronger and clearer than before. It may be time for you to say, I will no longer take the abuse. No longer will I tolerate being treated as though I'm worthless. No longer will I be a slave of my addiction. No longer will I be a victim of my circumstances. I decide to take responsibility for my marriage. I decide to take responsibility for my parenting. I decide to take responsibility for my future. And I decide to place it all in God's hands and let Him lead me to what He wants me to do. I decide to trust Him and follow Him. Friends, it is my prayer that each one of you will have the courage to flick the switch. 
to make the decision you need to make to trust God in your circumstances and that you will all experience His power in your life. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us the ability to make our own decisions. Please help us to take responsibility for our lives and our decisions and please help us to listen to your voice and follow where you lead. Help us to make wise decisions. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Please receive God's blessing and remember that there's power in every decision you make. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.